Well, thank you for joining us here today, Clarissa Castillo. Yes. All right. I pronounced it correctly, you did great. but not truly okay. correctly. You'll right. be fine. So anyway, I've always known you as Sid. Yeah. Where did that come? Where's how do you get Sid from Clarissa? So I was a bit of a punky person before we actually were Molly's to Molly's. Mm -hmm. Cue back to the nineties. System of a down is a thing. Okay. Everybody in Texas has a nickname. Well, mine was Sid because they were like, dude, your mom have has to have done acid when she had you because you were off the wall. It was a bit of a Stevo type, had a mohawk. And I ran rowdy punk shows. So. And fast forward, I meet my husband and we're Sid and Shraz, just fucking shit up, going out, having a good time, wearing outrageous clothing and just being part of Houston until we moved over here. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, I was in a band for 10 years. I remember. And yeah. And, you know, people called me Sid. But here we fast forward and we go to Molly to Molly. I'm selling tamales street to street, and nobody's heard of a tamale before. So they think I'm selling Molly. And I'm over here trying to sell six for five, and people are like, six for five Mollies? Let me buy it real quick, run to the bathroom, pull out tamales and salsa, come out fed, and they're like, that's not Molly tamale. <laughs> and thus we coined the name. Molly's tamales make you feel good. Excellent. So that was, that was my question is what came first, Molly or tamales? The tamales. And that's yeah. where that came from. Yeah. Okay. No, people, it's loud in the club. You think you hear Molly, you get Mexican food instead. You're still happy. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so this was born of punk rock. Yeah. Well, I was born of punk rock. This was born because I couldn't get a job while being in a band. Like I could, <laughs> I couldn't do anything. Like you got to work weekends. Got to work nights. If you want any type of minimum wage here in Oklahoma, you got to work weekends and nights. So people were like, no, no. And so I started cooking at home. I used to do dinner parties for everybody and stuff like that. But Shraz was like, these are some damn good tamales. How about you go sell them? First day I tried to sell them, this guy yelled at me. He was like, it's not Christmas. It's like dead of summer. You should know better. Tamales are like, uh, winter food and I ran home crying with my basket all upset and he was like that's just one guy it's just one guy go back out see what happens so I sold out I went door to door doing it and then somebody suggested I go to the high low right down the street from where I was living and that was where it just took off I was just selling chicken tamales and going to the high low selling out every night and then coming back and just trapping the fuck out of my kitchen just making more chicken tamales and this dude from california comes up to me and he's like you should sell burritos i want a burrito late at night tamales are cool but man that's way too authentic sometimes just make a plain burrito see what happens so i took the same chicken that i was using for them made it into some burritos went out had more money than what i could do with just went back to Winko and just kept on coming home and got stuck in the game. Yeah. yeah. So basically this thing started. Yeah. And just immediately. And it was it crazy. Yeah. Cause it was like, do I, what do I do? Do I want to play the show? Do I want to make a bunch of money? Let me make everything, go play this show, come back home, make money. And then I just, Became a tamale dealer. What year was this that this started? Oh, before pandemic. So we're talking about, I came here in 2011. So we're talking about starting this in 2015, 2016. Okay. So yeah, you would have. Yeah. It was called Rasta Mollies at the time I because I went that. from like punk to this hippie chick, you know, had the long hair, singing music, living life off the grid in the city, basically, you know, don't need any rules, just. Here we are. You can do whatever you want. So it was Rasta Molly's for a while while we were going through our love and peace phase. Sure. And <laughs> then we started getting really serious 
Like this graphic designer sought me out and people were talking business meetings. And this is where I had to like shape up, start becoming like a real serious business person, listen to like, I don't know, business YouTube and crap like that. Like try to figure out what all these other people do. And then we got branding Then we got like name coining and a menu and yeah. All right. Yeah. So I, I feel like the statue of limitations will be up on this, but technically what you were doing. Well, it wasn't to- because of the fact that it was samples and you all gave me tips for it. Oh, that's genius. Yeah. Like, what are you going to say? And there's like people who sell food from home all the time. And I mean, tamales have been illegal since before, like time, Spanish Inquisition time, like tamales have been illegal. So I'm not really worried about tamales. Tamales are kind of like walking backwards with a cheeseburger in your hand. It's one of those (laughs) things. And even, what was it, during the pandemic, they had to lift stuff like that because you could only work from home. So all these cookie makers and everything had to do it themselves out of home. They just made you write a different clause on it, which the pandemic was nuts. That's when I had to get a restaurant. That's what I was about to to say. It it feels like this was born out of like necessity at this point, survival. Well, the pandemic, I went out selling, everything was cool. And all these bartenders were giving me these solemn look. They're like, Molly. And I'm like, what? What's happening? I'm just here making money. And I was pretty uncontacted. I wasn't really thinking about the news. I was really just in my own world until the pandemic hit. And... It was, I believe it was the manager at the Pony Boy like looked at me and he's like, what are you gonna do? And I'm like, what am, what am I gonna do? What do you mean? He's like, we're all closing. And then I sat there with like that hospital Dixie cup that they gave you with your liquor in it. And you're just kind of looking at it and I'm looking at my team, my husband and my girlfriend at the time. And I'm like, I guess it's done. Like, let's talk about it. What's happening? Like, are we really not going to be able to sell bar to bar? Well, I started selling out of my house. Well, one to two people every hour became a line. Like, I'm talking cars down the street, people congregating in the front yard, eating on my porch, just with the bench right in front of them just chilling and we're in a pandemic. Everybody wants you to stay six feet away. I don't know what's going on. I freaked out when I heard that Ebola was happening. (laughs) Like I like didn't know what to do. And there was a moment where it's like the heat of the kitchen and I could hear choppers outside at night, just circling the house. And I was like, turn off the oven, open open the windows. They think it's a grow. Yeah. They think it's something else. Turn off the oven, open the windows, open the doors, air it out. Okay, I don't hear anything. Get it back in. Everybody start. Everybody go now and just wrap everything, get it done. And then we went back out in the streets. And I realized, I'm like, this isn't self-sufficient. This is stressful. This is exactly the lifestyle I was trying to get away from. (laughs) And now I'm doing it with burritos. (laughs) I got like two fridges in here and we're just like going. What was it? I was paying off a stove and the stove kept breaking, but I had the warranty and the repairman came in and he's like, what's happening with your stove? I'm like, I don't know. I was just making chicken knowing for me that it was like, 80 pounds of chicken and rice and burritos. And I'm like, I was making dinner for my family. Uh Uh-huh. It's soup for my family. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Pushing the limits of what your oven can do. And it was getting really stressful. And so I just went back to what I know best, fucking coffee. I just went back to being a barista for a second, doing limited menu, like custom orders through Facebook. And when I was doing the coffee thing, I dropped off pretty hard from the scene and people were looking for me. And then I ended up getting a job at this like food cafeteria facility. They cut me a break to get a stall there. Okay. So I got like a little booth there down in Midtown and I just kind of started working on tamales and burritos there. It was hard. I'm not gonna name the place because it was fucking hard and I don't have AC for two years and no heat, but I did it and I duked it out. And now we're going to have a new location. So we've gone this far, and now we have the brick and mortar coming in about two months. 
Okay. Yeah, it's happening. So this is going to be a full-on standalone. Yeah, space right there, right by the First Americans Museum and oh, really? Okana. Yeah, that water park coming up. Oh wow. So yeah, I told everybody I was like, I paid my sentence. I did my dues. Yeah. I dealt the deal. Then I worked with somebody, and now it's time for us to do our own thing. Gotcha. Yeah. So the place that shall remain unnamed yeah. is going to be a thing of the past. Does yeah. that end in September? No, it ends like in two weeks. I'm going to oh. start running out of that kitchen and selling bar to bar and getting everything ready and then making sure like farmers markets, production for retail. Yeah. Man, this has come a long way. It from has, just isn't it nuts? From just slinging. one, like six pack of chicken tamales, just wrapped in foil, sold out of a watermelon basket. Yeah. Yeah, this has all the makings of. We're yeah. gonna see this story on Hulu in like ten years. It's gonna be nuts, especially because you gonna... come home crying because the one dude <laughs> tried to tell you that you he couldn't make brutal. tamales in those. You have to remember, I was twenty. Yeah. I was a kid. Like, I consider 20 a kid. You don't know jack shit about what's going on. I didn't even know how to drive. And I'm just like rolling around having a good time in my mind. Everything's cool. And I just ruined this guy's day by trying to sell him tamales. It was nuts. <laughs> Some people have their things. Yeah. So with your with your menu, as you said, it started with tamales and burritos. Yeah. Are you, you obviously you're going to stay with those? Well, yeah. Are you of going course. now with you brick and well, mortar? Well, the are you restaurant doing a full-on we menu? did elotes, nachos. We did like the whole Mexican snack bar menu. So for this place, we're going to try and bring on a little bit more of the foods you see Instagram worthy. Like I've got a couple things up my sleeve, okay. but for sure, the tamales and the burritos we're going to make to where you can buy it from stores. So you don't always have to wait on me at the bar. Cause I mean, what was it? The other day I was in a boot for four weeks because I ripped the bottom muscle of my foot. Like there's wear and tear to the trap game. Like nobody, ever, everybody talks about the money and the mental stress. Nobody ever talks about like you got sciatica now cause you've been sitting in your car, cruising the streets, trying to like make your money. Like, yeah, you're great at math. But now you have knee problems. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like anything else. I mean, ultimately, on some level, it's physical labor. Yeah. You're in the kitchen, bent over things, mixing Hell yeah. things up. And I got to get old one day. I, I can't keep being like a little little child. Gotta, I got to get gray. I got to have like, you know, a cane at some point. I can't do this and do that. Yeah. It's rough. I, I swear. It's like I rolled over the odometer into the 40s and I woke up. <laughs> and like the next day, it was like my leg hurt. Yeah. And I'm getting out of bed. And I'm yeah. like, this is bullshit. No, that's your gift. Every decade, yeah. like the little fairy comes with a couple bats yeah. and like a little bit of uh, muscle stiffeners. Absolutely. Instead of muscle relaxers. It Absolutely. just takes you down. And it was like clockwork. Yeah. It was like, anyway. Uh, what, do you, what do you prefer? Do you, do you like the idea of doing it in a kitchen or is it kind of <sighs> betray your punk rock roots? To, nothing betrays your punk rock roots. I know. So here's the deal. I still stick to you can't get in trouble, people. Nobody could technically get in trouble. You can get like, oh, I'm scared. I'm going to get in trouble from people. No, you live your life. You do what you want to do. You be a decent person and you make sure to keep an eye on the fat cats that make all the money and get your portion of what you need creating your own community. That's punk rock. Absolutely. Yeah. You've, you've yeah, you don't your own kill age. punk rock by aging ever. You just become like a more, like an adult other people can trust. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Fantastic. Yeah, like I have, um, I have siblings and I'm the adult. I'm the oldest one of all my siblings, all my cousins. And they remember this wild teenage me and they come to visit and it's like, here's the business. Here's my house, here's my dog. And they're like, what happened? And I'm like, nothing happened. You just got to be responsible for other people. Look at Steve-O. He be eating veggies now. He stretches, you know. So it's the same thing. He calls everyone yeah. to make sure they're I'm still, still alive. I'm still a little crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I'm like a refined crazy. There yeah. you go. Well, let's, let's roll it all the way back. Where were you born and raised? Texas. All right. What part? Yeah. Oh, my God. So small town near Houston. I'm from like Brookshire, Katy area. Okay. Yeah. My family's a little country. My grandfather's from Mexico. So he came here in the 70s, I believe, 
for work. Him and his family went over to California. They did the Orange Orchard thing and everything. But he also was part of a band. He was like a mariachi player. And so he met my grandma. They got together. They settled down in Robstown, Texas. And you can put a map or something up and see. It's like real close. It's just like a little tour trail, like meet a lady, hang out with a lady, start a family. And then we go to Houston. Well, fast forward, my mom's rambunctious. My family is rambunctious. We cannot sit still. We're like a divide and conquer type group of motherfuckers. We just do what we want, whenever we want. And my mom is, she don't wanna go to school. She don't wanna listen. She just wants to date boys and listen to good music and wear her flannel, cause it's the 80s at the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, women wear the flannel and the high-end Aquanet hair and they smoke in the bathroom and they get into little fist fights every now and then. And my mom meets my dad at this punk show, I guess. And they start talking. I guess he was like, I'm sorry, dad. My family says you were living at a park, but. (laughs) That's awesome. Everybody comes up somewhere. I was homeless for a little bit, it's fine. But they meet each other. My dad has to start working because my mom now has me. Um, Thing he says about me all the time, he's an engineer now, so don't feel bad for him, he's great. But (laughs) I gotta cut in and say that before he has a tantrum and he sees this. (laughs) But. I guess my mom didn't tell him that she was pregnant. My family sent him to like, sent her to Austin while being pregnant. Cause they were like, you're in trouble. You can't be around anybody anymore. So she goes back to him. She says, Hey, I've got a kid. He's like, is that my kid? I come out spitting image of this man. <laughs> spitting image look exactly the same. They take care of me. He does construction jobs. My mom went to school to be a pharmacist and then fucked up because she started taking the pharmacies. It's fine. Again, it's the 90s at this point. Vicodin was big. So you just can't, can't stick away from it. So they're over there just partying their fucking faces off. My dad gets great plumbing, construction jobs, everything. They get good money, they lose money. They get good money, they lose money. We're in a house, we're out of a house. We're in the parents' house, we're at a friend's house. Cool, whatever. I'm just doing my thing. I'm hanging out with my uncles, just kind of learning the ropes of life. My grandparents step in at one point and they're like, hey, she's home alone and she's five. You can't fucking do that. Like, there's no way that this is sustainable. This is freaking us all out. She's staying with us. So I go stay with my grandparents and I live like an old person for 15 years plus. Just old, like coffee, newspaper mornings, fucking muscle rub, just like (laughs) old life. Yeah, the whole shebang. And I am spoiled in my opinion like my girlfriend tells me all the time she's like you were spoiled you had a really terrible life but you had a good life at the same time who else gets the master bedroom in their like grandparents house because they didn't talk really they were in one of those like old relationships like we're still married but we refuse to talk to each other and one of us is responsible for the coffee in the morning you press the button make the coffee, I'll get my own coffee. But if I see you, I'm gonna flip you off and cuss you out in Spanish. It was their thing. I think it was like, I don't know, some people do this. My grandmother just gave them the silent treatment for like 40 years. Wow. Yeah, but I guess they went to some wedding in Mexico. I was there and he sang some songs as a wedding singer and they did some things and my grandmother was so PO'd when we were coming back. I don't know what happened. I think it's a bit of a chick thing where she was just kind of mad, you know, and then they never talked about it. And then since she's old, time is like different. One day is the same as 10 years to this woman. So she's like, well, I'm never talking to you again. I'm living in this house. That's wild. And we're just going to kind of have old people fights every now and then. So. So you were at this wedding where the silent treatment began. Yeah, it was like four. And I guess something happened. I guess our family wasn't given enough at the wedding, but I told them, I was like, our family didn't do enough to get enough at this wedding. You have to put money down. You have to be a sponsor. You just wanted to come in. I was like, mom, you practically wanted to wear the wedding dress at the wedding. We don't need (laughs) that right now. So I am um, living with them, I'm going to school. My mom and dad, I guess, divorced at 12 because 
they move in. They're like, well, she gets to move in. We get to move in. I was like, this is stupid. Okay, fine. And so my parents are there. They don't get along. Like my mom and dad, they are like really cool at the party together, but they, there was like five hours. They could have five hours together. And then it was like, fuck you, no, fuck you all the time. And so they finally, they're like, we're done. We don't have any more stuff to break. Like, I guess we're finally done. And they dip, like my dad dips, my mom's there. And then here's the crazy shit. I didn't know my mom was like dating her like dealer at the time, the whole time. And now I have a sister. I'm like 12 years old, got a sister. Our new, the new guy is this like Coke dealer who looks like fat (laughs) bastard. From Austin Powers. <coughs> oh, wow. And this guy's gonna take me to school every day. <laughs> oh, wow. So she gets kicked out because she didn't tell my grandfather she was pregnant. She laid the bomb down on him at nine months, which she does. She's like kind of funny like that. She's I was like, say, it sounds familiar. Well, I'm pregnant. Are like, you gonna yell at me now? Yeah. And so we dip, we live with them in Houston for a little bit. I'm like, fuck this. I wanna go back to coffee in the morning and biscuits with the newspaper. You guys can have a good time here. I'm gonna go hang out with them. And so then I became hanging out at my grandparents until like around 16? Okay. 16. Well, I went to, I was going to punk shows in the weekends. I was hanging out, wanted to talk to everybody. In Houston, they have all ages punk shows, something that Oklahoma maybe should think about. Because if you're there, you're not causing trouble. Didn't want to hang out with my mom. Friends were hanging out at a punk show. Well, cell phones are a big thing. My grandfather overhears me and he speaks just enough English to hear that I've been not at my orchestra things, (laughs) not practicing with the nerd girls, but just rocking hard to punk music. He gets so angry, and I've never seen this man this angry, ever. He's just like, no internet, no computer, no anything. And I was just talking to my sisters about this the other day. I was like, when you're young, there's gonna be times where you're gonna think really irrationally, and you're gonna get so upset for something stupid. Don't don't do what I did. And so then I ran away from home, And I was like thinking about it the other day. I was like, that was a no cover punk show from my high school friends. It wasn't like I was seeing like last show of the misfits. Right. We revived so-and-so and and now he's gonna be here one day only. No, it was just a Eddie's punk show at the time. So my mom picks me up. She's like, this is too stressful for you. This is obviously this life that you have here with your master bedroom and your three meals a day, too stressful. You're coming with me to my trap house in Houston. (laughs) (laughs) We'll live a good life together. I just want all my daughters. And so I get over here and I realize that I'm a good kid. Holy shit, I'm like actually a good kid. Now I'm here. I have to go to Eisenhower High School. One of the the worst high schools in Houston. You have to go there, unzip your backpack, take off like your belt buckle and shit, like no Sharpies, like yeah, felt tip pin school type place. They have like required hairstyles. Did you also have to wear like an orange jumpsuit? Right, black and white stripes Basically you you had a number, it was crazy. And so I go there. And I end up being one of like the top students of my class because I went to Cyprus for eight years. So now I'm just rocking it on the books, getting everything done, teaching other kids like about like whatever we're reading about and stuff like that. Had a good time, got into boys. <laughs> Didn't know I could ever be boy crazy because I was like a nerd. I was like a nerd nerd. Like you don't understand. Like my my dream fantasy was not a human man, like an illustrated anime character. You can't create those yet. And so started hanging out, skipping school, being a little badass. Mom's like, this life has changed you and sent me back to my grandparents. Grandparents are like, we missed you. We'll never upset you again. We're just gonna love bomb you. You could do whatever you want, just as long as you take care of yourself stay at home, have a good life, and then I meet my husband. So it was like 
15, 16, around that time, go back, because it was just messy. This, like, they were selling crack. Like, they, yeah, like guns at the door and stuff like that. Real messy. So I go back to my grandparents. I don't tell them anything. I'm like, that was cool. Welcome me back. Enroll me in school. And I hang out for a little bit. And I meet Shraz Mercier, the husband you always see me with. Beautiful, gorgeous guy. Around the time High School Musical was a thing. Oh, yeah. So like Corbin Blue, that like Afro. This man had that fucking Afro. He had that and the Supras. And around that time, that was like what you wanted back in like the 2000s, late 10s, you know what I mean? And how old were you at this point? I was like 16. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, Shaz was 17 and he was my upperclassman. And I guess he was staying for just a, a year to see his father that he had never really gotten to have visitation with or anything. His parents divorced at four. So he was only there for a year and we met at the last month of the high, like his high school year there. And I'm like, what the shit? What do you mean? You're going back to Oklahoma. Can you Skype me? Cause Skype was a thing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you gotta take your top off and show the girls what you got on <laughs> Skype. Doesn't matter how insecure you are. <laughs> so we're talking and I guess his parents didn't agree to him going back to Oklahoma. So I got one more year with this dude. So we're going back to school. In two weeks, he dumps me. Ooh. Heartbroken. Like, I'm talking heartbroken. Like, I used to throw Route 44s at this motherfucker's, like, door <laughs> when I was driving by his house to the mall. I was just so disgusted that I could ever be dumped by somebody. I wasn't beautiful, but it was nice enough. You didn't <laughs> have to, not first period. And we still talked, did my thing handled art, got our stuff together. And we like ended up becoming really good homies. Well, see, he senior year, we hang out for like a little bit. He has to go back to Oklahoma. His father died. His stepmom kicked him out. He had to quit art school. And I just looked at him and I was like, I can't be homeless with you. Yeah. My parents were homeless and my uncles were homeless and sitting in this like dodge bronco thing where the seat doesn't recline i literally can't like i can't do this anymore i'm gonna go back to the grandparents you're gonna go to oklahoma i'm gonna graduate and i'm gonna come over so i graduate family's crying i'm the first graduate of the family like everybody's a big hurrah my mom's a mess because she's been selling ecstasy for like freaking two months, just trapping nonstop. Like she has gone to the dark side, basically, like all day, every day, like hanging out with people that I went to high school with. Ooh. I was like, can you please stop hanging out with my mom? She needs to pick up our like groceries tomorrow. <laughs> Make sure she comes home at least by four. And um, he picks me up. We go to Oklahoma. We're doing our thing, we're having a good time. I'm trying to grow mushrooms in my grandmother-in-law's closet. She um, she went to the hospital for something and his aunt was in charge. And I guess she, um, I didn't know she wasn't supposed to smoke weed. And she was like ripping Adderalls and like smoking weed and like dabbing out my bong. I was an 18, by the way. This is what some 18 year olds do. <laughs> and she goes through like this K-hole weird manic moment where she has no idea what's going on. She's freaking out. Shraz had to call 911, get her picked up, go to the hospital. And I shit you not, it's like my grandmother-in-law on one floor, my aunt-in-law ODing on everything she tried to put on her body all at once on another floor, and then his mother on another floor because she's got pneumonia. And they just wheeled them all in to see this woman exorcist style freak out. Well, they all come home and I'm the one in trouble for growing mushrooms out of my closet. <laughs> Not the lady who's been like going to different doctors and buying different prescriptions and mixing them as a registered nurse. Not anybody else. I've been taking care of the household, but I've got mushrooms in the closet. So you have to go. So I was working as a housekeeper at the time and I just picked up everything, left, got an apartment in my housekeeping place. And um, this is where Bolsey starts. That's what I was about to ask. We had this 
big organ that me and Shraz picked up. We're 18, and that's what 18-year-olds do. They see a $50 organ at the thrift store, and they buy it. And they were like, if you don't get this organ, you're going to be in so much trouble. So we start hauling this organ back to our apartment. We're playing it all the time because we don't have a TV. We don't have internet. We're living off of Starbucks sandwiches because he worked at Starbucks. So I'm like eating the frozen food he brings and just a housekeeper trying to get our apartment together. And, you know, grown shrimps. And <laughs> <laughs> doing the As you do. Thing. And this is before the tamales. This is for music, everything. I go to my dealer's house for weed, weed. And I, I'm i like, you moving? And he's like, yeah, I'm moving. My landlord's raising my rent $50. And I was like, well, how much is it now? He's like, $450. <laughs> I'm like, it's a two bedroom. Front and backyard. You're my weed dealer. You can't. You're not. Give me your landlord's number. I call the landlord. I arrange everything. I move all the shit down. We haul this 200 pound organ again, which then we promise ourselves we're never going to haul. We're never going to touch again. It's here. It should be fine. And then we're living in our house and this guy parks in our fucking driveway. And so me and Shraz being from Houston are like, hey, hey, hey. What is this? And Shraz like, I'm going to smash it. I'm like, no, you don't need to smash it. We're just going to see who it is. It ends up being a really good friend, Justin Hogan's car from um, Spooky Fruit. And um, uh, I'm going to remember his name later, like the other band that he's in. But he's a great musician, great musician, like literally about to break the window of David Bowie's car because it's in your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> really peaceful guy he's like can i buy y'all pizza so he we chat he comes in he sees the organ and then we show him that me and Traz sing music and rap and play to this organ because we have no technology so this is what we have and this is what we're going to do and and that's what i'm trying to ascertain did you do anything musically before this or did you no. literally pick it up because no we was picked it up option? now shaz had to be in music lessons since he was like four i was in orchestra because i wanted to not have to go to school as much because if you're in orchestra you get like extra freebies and all that so i have like a general knowledge of music but no i'm just i write well I love writing. So the lyrics come to voice and then we created music. Well, Justin, Mr. Hogan says, well, let me be your manager. I just want to manage this. I'm going to school right now. I've got a lot going on. So he books us a show and we're like two feral uncontacted wooks at this point that are now doing a show at um, Bad Grannies over oh, okay. there in the Plaza District, our very first show. And it kills. People are obsessed. And then from there, we got booked another show. Like literally, Justin was like, all right, who's next? I'm a businessman. Let's get it all done right now. So we're doing the salon. From the salon, we're doing camps. From camps, he then realizes, he's like, I'm gonna need to play guitar on this. We need to fill up the sound. So then he is now a member. So of the band. At that point, is now a trio? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're just doing this. He knows everybody. His friend made a music video for us. I'm just down for the ride. I came from, you know, listen, Clarissa, you're going to have to hold this gun up to the people while I get this money ready. Like, yeah. I don't, I want you to stay very still and don't smile. And I'm like, okay, thanks, dad. Like, step <laughs> dad to all right let's sing these songs about the environment i can't believe we're playing a show on a stage right now i don't know what sound guys are telling me i'm gonna have to buy a book from half price books and understand what you all are talking to me about i this is lingo that i've never talked to before and we just kept hitting it got south by southwest and that was 10 years of just a groovy time. All right. I don't yeah. I don't mean to be rude with this question, yeah. but have you ever made like a conscious decision in your life? No. Or does just no. you just get thrown yeah. by the winds yeah. in different well, directions? I'm one of those people that just kind of like 
I don't have any real plans. I've never had any actual plans or anything. I wasn't that kid that was like, I'm going to do this and we're going to do that. I've always just kind of gone with the flow. For sure. And I also really like adventure. I'm like an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. So I'm going to go where the fun is. Like, yeah. And everyone loved Bolsey. I mean, it had oh, this it huge was so cult cute. Volume. Why did it end? Oh, okay. So for one, the tamales. I'm busy all the time. I'm making all this stuff happen. Huh. Two, I couldn't really hold on to a lot of obligations that I used to have because my life was taking over. So you say, have you ever made a conscious decision in your life? <laughs> right. I got older. Right. And I had to start thinking about things a little bit more logistically for me. I had this cat that I've had for like the longest time. She's like 14 now. And around the time she got sick as fuck. Like I'm talking about, they wanted me to put her down, but then I found this like wonderful, smart doctor who like immigrated here from India. And he was like, I have other plans. We just need to make $2,000 and I can make this surgery happen. And like, I had to stop everything, do that, make sure that my house was right, business was right. And you're not gonna wanna hang out with that person. Sure. You're not going to want to do anything with that person. Like your obligations are not other people's lives. Right. So we closed that book. Like we closed it fast. We were like, all right, it's done. Can't make the trip to Kansas. Y'all can't break up. One person go to Kansas. Your life seems to be overtaking yourself. Yeah. So, yeah. But everybody's doing pretty good as far as I know. I don't know if there's like some behind closed doors or anything <laughs> like that. But, you know, Don, he's got that radio gig. He's a radio DJ. I think, oh, I usually know his station. I'm getting old. I'm not remembering things like I used to. And then Justin revamped his band that he had. I think it's called Los Bandidos. I really, 10 points if it is Los Bandidos. <laughs> but yeah, so he works with his crew again. And... um you know, Gary Brown, he was our bassist for a while. That guy's famous. He goes everywhere. He's all over the world. He's DJing, he's bass playing, like freaking phenomenal. So it's kind of like that. All right, this is done. Let's all be successful. Yeah. 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 It definitely felt like one of those moment in time bands. Yeah. Like anytime you saw him, you were like, I don't know how long this is going to last because things like this don't like yeah it's just too perfect it's, exactly you know things but can't line fine. up in the universe like well is it just i i get called out for it every day they're like ballsy what's the next album and i'm like where have you been yeah like, have you time traveled to now it's been five years <laughs> jesus christ um i did do like a pop thing called poodle for a while, it was so shitty, it was good. Like I wanted to make like really crappy pop gamer music, like not crappy in that way, but stuff that like anybody who wasn't into pop would be like, I can't stand this. I don't wanna listen to this. It's stuck in my head now and I'm mad at you about it. Like I was trying to make something like candy sweet, like so sickly, but awesome at the same time and it worked. I mean, I got like, what was it? A little deposit from like SoundCloud for the thing the other day. I was like, oh, let me re-register my licensing. <laughs> and I am gonna try and work with a couple more producers this year because I have more time. Time is of the essence. If you wanna do things, you gotta have a little bit of time for it or else it's gonna be kind of crappy. Sure. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm gonna do live music. I've got an autoimmune disease. I, got, I get sick easily. And I don't think I can make as much commitments towards everybody else as myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm ready to have like a good time on my time. Like I'm leaving in New Mexico tomorrow. I'm trying to like start backpacking and go into the wilderness and stuff like that. Gardening again, trying to garden medicine. Like Getting this back is into that grandparents different. Life. Yeah, like it's very different than like, all right, brought to you by Sky Vodka. <laughs> Sid, you're on in 10 minutes and then you gotta be over here in 30. Make sure to sign 40 of these and then be back at recording by seven. And try not to break any priorities. Yeah, no, I'm just a good personality. I don't think I'm a good commitment. Fair. Yeah, unless it's my business. I was and about then, to say. Yeah, because that's run by a team of 10 people. Okay. So it's done. Like, it's basically 
And that that was the the question because we always still know you as the face of this. Yeah. How many people are behind it now? So for Molly's to Molly's, you got your graphic designers, uh-huh. you got the accounting firm, you got your lawyer, you got the key three people, me and the thruple handling the decision making because I started dating Kat and then I was like, you do it, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the the workers, like the base bone of everything, which is me and a really good friend of mine, shout out to Shelby. <laughs> and we're just all kind of doing it until we can get the Shark Tank episode to go in and explain what we got. So it went from basically trying to keep yourself off the street to now you're supporting. Yeah, well, ecosystem. that's scarier than keeping me off sure. the street because imagine, like, for instance, the AC is broken at this place. Well, you can't tell people we're shutting down the whole thing. You're not getting money next week. You have to still supply cash to everybody that dedicated the months before the AC broke. Because it's their livelihood. You are their livelihood and you don't want to be like, I think this is the thing that some people, a lot of bosses complain about a lot is like, well, why do you rely on me? Because you pay for my livelihood, bitch. (laughs) Like, how? what am I supposed to do if you don't give me 40 hours a week? You cut my hours and then you're mad at me? No. So you have to take on that responsibility and make sure that you're making more money to lift them over the years because nobody's going to work for you for the same price. Right. You got to make sure that however many years that they dedicate to you pays off in the long run because nobody's immortal. So you have to then start thinking about their retirement, their exit strategy, what vehicle they're going to be able to afford, how you're going to be able to afford that vehicle for them, health insurance. Yeah. It's important. Right. Yeah. Are, have you gotten to that point where you can offer benefits to your folks or is that still in the works? Almost there. Okay. Almost there. Once I get out of the percentile deduction from my place and I get a little bit more free range to expand, it's crazy. The life change that even my friends and workers are going to have because that's the cool part. It's not just about like, I got a good job now. It's more about like, hey, What if we got like a work vehicle and you took it home? Because all you do, you work five days a week. So you come here and there, you get groceries. So take the work vehicle home. Don't steal it if you quit. But (laughs) we'll need that back if you don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And and so now the brick and mortar concept, I, I find fascinating because I've literally just been a drunk dude in a bar who has watched this thing yeah. like grow and you know, and see that to now you're moving, did you say you're moving over to your fam, First Americans Museum? Yeah, right there on Southeastern. Okay. It's the parking did, lot of Old Paris, that shopping yeah. center that overlooks it. Yeah. How did how did this location come about? Oh my God, okay. Pop vision, body soaps and bath bombs, <laughs> this. I had to come clean somebody's house. I clean houses. I've never stopped cleaning houses. At the end of the day, if my restaurant can't afford to pay my workers, I'm scrubbing a toilet. I'm doing a bed. I'm redoing somebody's closet and I will have that money by the end of the week. I refuse to fail. (laughs) So I got called on an emergency clean to go help somebody who just needed everything from point A to point B from one store to the other one. They did bath bombs, amazing stuff. I'm wearing their lip gloss right now. And I I was explaining to them that I'm kind of in a weird situation with where I'm working. I um, can't get as many benefits because I'm a contract worker underneath them. So since I'm not a real business, I can't even get a business loan. Oh, wow. After working two years. Yeah, I, I was getting railed, like, Business wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as an entrepreneur, like total fuckery. But in every book, chapter one, they tell you this is going to happen and then you got to proceed, expand. So I told them everything. And Nikolai has a superpower that is, I'm not going to rest until you're happy and that something's going right for you. And he had all these connections, knew how to read the internet. Cause you have to understand, I was raised by grandparents. 
It's the devil box. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do anything but tech and five. I'm like <laughs> just a really smart, dumb girl at the end of the day. <laughs> and um, he found me a list of 20 places to check out. Well, I start going down the list. I meet the neighbors of places. Oh, this place is crazy. No, this place is crazy. And I find the First Americans Museum. They had one build out restaurant, didn't get it in time. But the lady looked at me, I took her over to the to show her what I was working with. And I'm sharing one kitchen with three people, like three other restaurants. And I'm in like the back corner and it's not at all gonna work financially here, but this is a business that can make a lot of money for everybody that I'm involved with. This is going to actually catch on, it'll be great. And I give her a couple margaritas. She leaves to Mexico. She comes back with a plan. She buys the vent hood, the stove, the prep table, the mop sink. She goes to the city planner. She builds a wall and she turns this barber shop into a restaurant in an empty space that she had that somebody just moved out. She's like, you have a chance and I know you and I have a lot of faith in this. I've heard about you. And so literally someone is building your restaurant while you're shutting down the yes. second iteration of the, yes. the first kitchen, if you will. Yes. That's wild. It is so wild. I can't believe it. I didn't realize that people could be so diligent to help. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, kind of going back to everything you said with kind of the punk hippie ethos, you put enough good things out in the world. Yeah. And, you know, make people's lives better. Yeah. Ultimately, at some point, you're going to run across someone who wants to do that for you. And I mean, she sees dollar signs in her eyes. I see dollar signs in my eyes. And I signed a good long contract with her. Like I'm talking about this thing staying there for like a long time. All right. And it's So this it's is the big. permanent location. Yeah. yeah. All so right. So it's going to be fun. How do you feel about that? Kind of, you've always, you know, flown by the seat of your pants before. Yeah. Like literally gone to bars and then you have this shared kitchen and now you're committed to to one space yeah. how does that feel it is how i explained to cat i was like it feels like you have to put your war paint on every day and you have to build out this plan and just go out and just try to conquer it and if you fail you got to come back dress your wounds go back out and i can't say no to any opportunity i get like I can't just retract anything. I have to keep progressing regardless of how big it gets. So it's, I try to keep the stress of it low because I know that stress is more of like a chemical thing. Mm -hmm. It's not actually happening. Like if I can change the scenario a little bit in my head, it keeps things a little bit more workable. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's just wake up every day with a plan and try to get it conquered. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope that answers it. It does. It absolutely yeah. does. You know, that's what I always say when people talk about stress and they're upset about something in the moment. I'm like, on this day last year, what was it that was stressing you out the most? Um, and my girlfriend was mad at me. Exactly. And I drew, I painted this beautiful picture of bacon and eggs because she... She's so sweet, it's so sexy. She just, she's mad at me because I'm stupid. <laughs> but like a good stupid, I just make really strong decisions without advising the council. Yeah. And um, she comes back and I'm crying and I'm like, I'm so sorry I upset you. And she looks at this painting and she's like, what is that? I'm like, I just needed to paint something. It's bacon and eggs. And then she pulls up her sock and it's a bacon and egg sock. Oh, no shit. And she's like, you are so obsessed that you drew my sock while I was away mad. That like pulled up on my Facebook memories today. And I was like, yeah, that's how I process things. <laughs> so you were literally to the day you happen to remember this. Yeah, I was, like I know exactly what happened to the day last year. <laughs> well, you this. fucked up my whole thing because usually people are like, oh, I can't remember no. something. And you're like, no, no I actually remember. <laughs> I know exactly what happened last year <laughs> at this time. <laughs> oh, that's great. Best picture of bacon and eggs I've ever painted. Where is it now? It's, um, what was it? I have a kitchen set. I like to put all my kitchenware in one place, uh -huh. like all my baking goods, and it's on top right there. All right. All this anger and sadness right there on top of something I make, like a baked cookie. <laughs> she loves it. She won't let me put it anywhere. She like, oh, no. she won't let me sell it. Like, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Where were you last year on this day? Oh, man. I was 
freaking out. I just kind of took taken over as the publisher of this thing. Oh shit! And so yeah, I was trying to figure out what we were gonna do. And again, like how you're gonna get people paid and all that. Suddenly, it went from I just put together these stories to now yeah. I'm responsible for these people's rent and food money. Yeah, but the money comes. Yeah. Money is abundant, even in the lowest of times. You just have to figure out a way to pivot and find it because it's liquid. And that's why we're here. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, maybe the newspaper isn't where we need to be at this point. I know yeah. you had reached out uh, to talk kind of about this. So whenever we put this together, I was like, this is what we need to do. Well, it's fine. We need to have you on as our, as our first guest here. Yeah. And everybody gets to know the story. I wasn't just born out of a sunshine fart. <laughs> I came from the streets, refined myself, and created a business Absolutely. out of what knowledge gave me. Two months you'll be moving into this yes. space. Do you actually yes. have a soft opening date for yes. it? Yes. Okay. It's going to be, what's it, August, September. So we're doing the pink party at the space. So October 30th is when everybody can come in, take a look at what's going on, see everything that we're doing, and start ordering your food. But before that, you can get all your food bar to bar. We're gonna try and like create key bars that actually serve our food. So you don't have to, you know, wait for me all the time because everybody's always waiting and feeling like they're missing me. And we're gonna try and create a thing, not like a GPS, but something that lets you know the route on a day-to-day -day basis if you subscribe. So okay. yeah, we're, so we were so, underground this entire time and now you're gonna see like a website a little bit more logistics towards everything a little bit more understanding of where to go and what the menu is and just more straightforward availability instead of just hoping and gambling that you're gonna get something okay yeah and that was the other thing it was always the giant pain in the ass especially for a drunk person to be like is hey, she coming or is she Molly? not coming? Yeah. And they're yeah. like, oh, well, Sid was here. I was like, I don't give a fuck about Sid. I'm looking for Molly. <laughs> that was a Twitter fight, actually. <laughs> really? People were like, who makes the best tamale? <laughs> and it was like, well, Molly's tamales, of course. And everybody's like, fuck Molly tamale. I know this chick named Sid. And she comes around with a watermelon basket. And it's better than any tamale you've ever had. And everybody's like, what about Clarissa? <laughs> <laughs> and somebody had to go on there and be like, it's the same person absolutely it's the exact same person absolutely yeah. after doing it all those years hand to hand i mean i love that i still and i, I you 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 again you developed three different reputations based yeah, on who knew crazy. you by one name yeah uh is is there a part of you that you know doesn't want to give up those random bar crawls you do or are you sick never. of that shit after i'm never we're it? creating burrito babes yeah it's like the red bull girls oh no kidding yeah so you're expanding this. yeah yeah we're gonna trade them in combat and teach them how to go out and do what I do with a serious face, but a smile and handle everything and know how to fix problems and be that person. Yeah. I feel like this is like the precursor to like a movie about, you know. The burrito babes. I was about to say. I'm Bosley. Like, like, exactly. Like, keep it chill. Don't like. <laughs> Don't worry, babes. Just keep on going. Yeah, Your route ends at two. You have somehow gone from one basket and you're building an empire from it. It's going to be cool. I'm going to try and send them out to different towns because we got the gas vehicle now because I was doing everything out of an electric car. Oh, wow. Yeah. The Barbie car out back. Uh -huh. So we're going to have some of them go to Norman. And then other people want them in like different towns because wherever there's a bar. Oh, yeah. There could be a Molly. Oh, yeah. 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 That's that's rad. Yeah. And then at the same time, you're going to have this brick and mortar. Yeah, that, that people can rely on. And then it's going to have the Uber Eats Grubhub DoorDash attached to it. So if you're at the hotel by the First Americans Museum, Hilton downtown, you can get room service from Molly's to Molly's. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fantastic. And how have you managed to deal with all of this and keep your uh, romantic life intact. Oh, I'm romantic. Um, That's what you do. You, you come in, you keep the romance, you you know, stay straightforward with everybody about work and you spend your time with the people you love. Yeah, essentially. Or you take them out with you. People don't like to like, yeah. So whenever like they miss me a lot, I'm like, get in the car. Let's go out, let's go bar to bar, let's hang out, let's do this. I'll make us dinner by the end of the night, it's fine. And yeah. so through all of this chaos, this band, all the iterations of this restaurant, you basically stayed with your high school sweetheart, yeah. if you will. Yeah. 
Like how, uh, again, you, there's gotta be some secret there. What, what, what has made that work for you guys for so long? Let's see. You get with somebody who's not afraid of change because everybody changes. You gotta be willing to be with somebody that you know is adapting and moving forward in themselves. When I met Shraz, he has bloomed into this completely different person than who I knew at the time. And it's cool. If you stay not scared and you're cool and you're supportive with your people, then it's just a fun ride. You're just having, it's your party bus. Yeah. On the way to what you call the pink party? Yeah. Is that gonna be, that's your launch party? Yeah. All right. And like I said, as long as you stay like mindful, like, I mean, my biggest thing, and this is how I really keep people. If you're hungry, your partner's probably hungry. Grab food for two. If you can't be there, drop off food, give them a kiss, and then leave. Scissor them a little bit. Have a good time. You just got to keep it fresh. Absolutely. Yeah. And as you said, you know, <laughs> your your business model, you, what did you say earlier that you take Scarface? Oh, yeah. You watch Scarface, and then whatever <laughs> you're trying to sell in this world, whatever you're trying to do, you Photoshop his whatever out of there, and then you add what you're doing. If you're the Lululemon girl, you're probably thinking about leggings while watching Scarface. If you're doing, what is it, like business or if you're cryptocurrency, your cryptocurrency is Scarface. You just make sure that you keep a good business plan. You don't fall off the wagon. If you fall off the wagon, you accept the humility that you fell off the wagon and get back on and you just keep working. So obviously yeah. you've you've put in this grind forever and you said that yeah. you're now going to be taking up hiking. Is this your first... Uh true vacation no. in, in some time? Well, yeah, some time. I did do like a dinky little vacation to Tahlequah. Beautiful place, by the way. Don't overpopulate it, but <laughs> it's great. I, um, Kat, my girlfriend, who is wonderful, she puts her foot down when I get too stressed. And then she plans these vacations. Perfect. And then tells me like, well, this is happening regardless if you like it or not. So you, here's your budget. And then this is where you're stopping. And this is where we're going. And so we're trying to do it like at least every half year to get Perfect. me to like stop what I'm doing and go. Cause I don't take off days. Yeah. Yeah. It's every day is food for me. So, and so. So as someone who's just discovered New Mexico myself or rediscovered, I guess I was there once as a kid, but yeah. that doesn't count. The area you're going to, what are you going to be doing out there? Aliens. No, I'm just. <laughs> So Roswell is on the list. Yeah, no, um, her grandfather is turning 90, which is crazy in America. You got to celebrate that, you know? And so she has to go to this birthday party. And I love looking at Google Maps and just picking the towns, seeing what's up with them and just doing like the, you know, tourist mm -hmm. thing all the way up to the grandpa's birthday party and then going back, checking out everything, going back to Oklahoma. Getting Fantastic. the restaurant started. I was about to say, when yeah. will you be back? Um, probably next week. Next probably. Week. Yeah. If sometimes I'm there and I actually stop working and I'm like, you know what? This is nice. Yeah. And then I stay a couple extra days. Like, that's how she gets me. Like, I always say three days and then I get there and I'm like, ah, this is nice. I'll hang out here for the rest of my life. Cool. Absolutely. Until I, I got to go back. I literally did the same thing, you know, with, with this and getting this rolling. And yeah. these kind folks uh, mm -hmm. have been busily working while I was just wandering away, pretending, putting blinders on and pretending it didn't exist. Heck yeah. So next week. I'll this be is, back, burrito is, baby. Is here. Yeah, grinding. It's kind of yeah. date. I don't know date specific here uh, on on this, but we'll just basically say we can see you around town in August. Yes, and then at yes. end of October. Yeah, come it's going to be great. It's. I'm really excited about it. We're going to be creating a shirt for everybody. It's going to say "Free Molly," <laughs> and it's going to have my mugshot on it, a like cute little mugshot, and it's basically our liberation shirt that we're selling to everybody. To kind of prove that we're out. Exactly. You My know, sentence is done. You have proof yeah. of concept. Yeah. You have paid your dues. I have. It's now time yeah, to reap I did the it. rewards. Yeah. Well, thanks again for joining us here today. Absolutely. Clarissa. Yes. Sid. Molly. I know, right? Whichever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go with today. So again, yeah. this has been a, a fun little outing and uh, I've learned quite a bit. 
Absolutely. And, I'm going to uh, do my shout outs real quick. I was about to say now. Shout out now to Raymond Castillo, the best uncle in the world for taking care of me and picking me up from all them raves. <laughs> shout out to my sister Lizette, my sissy Bethany, my cousins Lizette and Lola. Peace out to your quinceanera. Shout out to all the bars I serve to. Thank you for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you all in my service. And shout out to Shraz and Kat. Thank you all for keeping me around and not kicking me out. Fantastic. Yeah. I better get an invite to the pink party. Is all you I'm are. Saying. I'm going to be really upset if you don't show up if I give you an invite. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I'll be there. Good. Deal. All right. Peace. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>